What's up, heathens? How y'all doing? I'm the Godless Engineer and I critically analyze apologist claims to give you the best arguments and information so that you can stand up and use your voice. Today, the sentient cupcake, formerly known as Matt Powell, will attempt to debunk the best evidence for evolution. He's not only going to show how this evidence isn't indicative of evolution, but also how it proves creation. So this should be interesting. If y'all want to fuck around and find out how a sentient cupcake uses mutations to prove creation rather than evolution, then please stay tuned. So the number one place that evolutionists go to genetically to prove evolution, quote unquote, is mutations. And they'll claim that as genes mutate over time, that means that you'll become a frog to a prince over millions of years. And they think that mutations somehow create new information. But what a mutation actually is, is information from one parent, information from another parent being put together and it corrupts. That's what a mutation is, is a genetic corruption. It's deleterious to the gene code by definition. And so from generation to generation, we accumulate mutations as a human population. And as we add mutations or errors into the code, because that's what a mutation even is, as you add errors in, things get worse in our bodies from generation to generation. All right, first of all, none of what he says here is true. Nobody claims that a frog will turn into a human. That's a fundamental misunderstanding that creationists have. That process would violate the law of monophyly. The law of monophyly states that once an organism is part of a clade or is taxonomically grouped, all of that organism's descendants will also be a part of that clade. He can't jump around clades like he wants this frog to do. The scientific theory of evolution never indicates that an amphibian can turn into a homo sapien. That's just simply impossible. I wouldn't say that evolution creates new information. It just results in different information. But we have observed new adaptations and new functionality due to mutations. But to say new information arises would require us to define what information is in this particular context, and creationists just simply don't like to do that. Different information is not good or bad by itself. It becomes good or bad depending on the effects of the mutation. He claims that all mutations are deleterious, but that couldn't be farther from the truth. Most mutations are neutral, a few are good, and then the rest are deleterious. The deleterious mutations do outnumber the good ones, but the deleterious ones are often phased out naturally via processes like natural and sexual selection. The good mutations do survive because they allow the organism to survive better in its environment. The organism then goes on to propagate thus spreading the mutation throughout the group. We do accumulate mutations, but this just results in a diverse genetic code. That doesn't mean that our bodies get worse or our chromosomes deteriorate like he wants you to think. And so the supposed best evidence genetically for evolution actually is some of the best evidence for creation. And it proves that we would have had to start out perfectly genetically. And then when man sinned, it got corrupted. And then from generation to generation, our genetics would get worse over time. Uh, what does it mean to have a perfect genetic code? Do you mean that we started out Aryan as fuck with blonde hair and blue eyes and then we degraded from there? I have literally no idea what he could mean by our genetic code being perfect. Also, what does sin have to do with our genetic code? Prior to original sin, if Adam and Eve would have propagated, how would that have even fucking happened? What would human reproduction even look like on a genetic level? What would reproduction in general look like on a genetic level? It's incredibly unscientific to say that our bodies worked completely differently 
prior to Original Sin. We have no indication that Original Sin is a real thing in the first place. Again, mutations do not necessarily degrade our genes. This sentient cupcake thinks that all mutations are deleterious and that there are no good mutations whatsoever. Mutations result in us having different genes than our parents do, but that's okay. And yes, we do accumulate deleterious mutations, but those are eventually phased out through natural processes. And so in 2003, the Human Genome Project was completed and they found that we actually lose one to two percent of our genetic information per generation as human beings. And so, for example, my son has one to two percent less genetic information than I do. And his son will have one to two percent less genetic information than him. So as genetic information gets lost, as mutations accumulate in the genetic code, things will only get worse for us over time. This is not accurate in any kind of sense. If you define genetic information as the genes contained in our chromosomes, then you definitely do not physically lose genes with every generation. I have yet to find any good citation for the statistic that he mentions here. It definitely doesn't come from the Human Genome Project, but I guess I could have missed it. The most relevant reference that I could find was really in reference to reproductive fitness due to the lack of selective pressures that modern humans don't have. So citation fucking needed on this one there, Cupcake. Things aren't getting worse for us over time, and yes, we are continuing to evolve. The idea that our genetic code would worsen over time is completely antithetical to how we understand genetics. The evolutionary process allows a group of organisms to adapt to their environment and thus allowing them to survive and propagate. Humans evolved from ape-like ancestors. At this point, that is a fact. We are only slightly different from them on a genetic level. Not better, but just different. Now evolutionists claim that things get better over time and that we started out simple and that we got more complex through mutations. But what mutations actually do is cause errors and problems in the genetic code and that's why we have things like Down syndrome or even autism. Those were caused by genetic mutations that were deleterious and caused genetics to fail in certain of the human population. Uh, scientifically literate people wouldn't describe evolution as making things better. Through the process of evolution, animals are able to adapt to their environment. Those adaptations could allow the animals to survive better or not. And that ability to survive and propagate is what determines whether or not those mutations were good, bad, or neutral. Deleterious mutations are the causes of genetic diseases like he mentioned. But as our population grows and our understanding of those conditions increases, we will end up having more cases of them happening. There are also environmental factors that you have to consider here, not just the fact that mutations exist. And so autism and certain diseases are actually increasing over time as we accumulate genetic mutations. So when an evolutionist says that mutations are somehow proof that we're evolving, <laughs> they don't even know, that that's, they're literally admitting that they don't even know what a mutation is because a mutation by the very definition is a copying error. That's what the definition of a mutation even is. So by all these errors, somehow we have a perfect genetic code for humans now. Well, mutations are copy errors, but that doesn't inherently make them bad. He obviously has a one-track mind, so if a word sounds bad, then it definitely is bad. Damn the context. So apparently, copy errors can only ever be bad to him. And yes, mutations are a major driving force in the evolutionary process, but it's important to remember that they are not the only things that comprise the evolutionary process. Natural selection, sexual selection, genetic drift and draft, and more are all very integral to evolution. And no, scientifically literate people would not claim that evolution produces a perfect genetic code. That's simply not how the evolutionary process works. That's their logic, is that genetics mutated from a frog to a prince over millions of years. 
that is completely unscientific on every single level. And just the fact that somebody would think that mutations somehow cause perfection and that we would get a perfect human species millions of years later. Folks, it just goes to show they don't even care what science is. Oh, I feel like he's at the point where he's just regurgitating information that he's already covered because he really doesn't have that much to say. Because as we've already covered in this video, the law of monophyly would prevent a frog from turning into a prince. And I feel like I need to emphasize this. No scientifically literate person would say that, nor would they ever say that evolution produces a genetically perfect organism. I doubt that any evolutionary biologist would even be able to define what that means. What's unscientific on every single level is pretty much everything that Cupcake has said in this video. If they cared, they would look at the definition of words before throwing out those words as supposed best evidence genetically for evolution. And evolutionists always like to claim that natural selection somehow disproves God and it proves that evolution is somehow true. But just the phrase natural selection literally proves that the genetics have to do some selecting or they have to make a choice. That's what select even means, hence the phrase natural selection. And so selection requires consciousness. Choices require consciousness. <laughs> wow, I have never seen an ironic statement play out so quickly. He starts off by claiming that scientifically literate people should definitely know the definitions of words before they use them, because apparently they don't know what mutations are. But then he turns around and he does exactly that by redefining what natural selection means. Uh, maybe you should take your own advice there, Cupcake. You shouldn't use words you don't fucking understand. Natural selection is the natural process through which organisms that are better adapted to their environment tend to survive and produce more offspring. There is no conscious entity making those selections. The selection occurs because an organism is better adapted to survive in what, whatever environment that it lives in and is therefore able to produce more offspring. The organisms that are not better suited to survive in the environment end up dying off before they can reproduce. That is how this selection is made. You don't see some wizard out there using his wand to completely destroy a species, do you? And it's not natural randomization. If it was a dead, unconscious process that came about through spontaneous generation, there wouldn't be any conscious coding involved. But just the phrase, natural selection, proves that there's genes that are selected, and hence a choice is made. God programmed our genetics to be able to make choices, and selection can only occur when there's a mind behind it. And so even the phrase natural selection points to intelligent design and disproves atheistic evolution at the fundamental of the phrase and of genetics. Uh, you do realize that spontaneous generation is a creationist idea, right? It's definitely not a scientific one. Spontaneous generation was actually disproved by Louis Pasteur in his fly and rotting meat experiment. You see, at that time, it was the generally accepted idea that rotting meat produced flies. This was the idea of spontaneous generation. Louis Pasteur designed an experiment that isolated all the variables. What he figured out was that the flies landed on the rotting meat, laid their larvae, and then the larvae would hatch, producing flies. Therefore, the rotting meat was not the source of the flies. They were not spontaneously generated. Scientifically literate people simply do not think that spontaneous generation is a thing. The mutations are somewhat random, with selection being non-random. There are some mutations that are more prevalent than others, though, and that's why I say that it's somewhat random. I can't believe that he thinks that God consciously selects or codes our genetics. That means that his God is responsible for all of those genetic diseases that he was talking about before. But then at the same time, we are the ones responsible for it because of original sin? It's getting very confusing up in here. And so I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope that you guys have seen that by one man's sin, death entered into the world and death by sin. And so sin was what actually caused genetic mutations and genetic failures and copying errors, not 
evolution making things better, but sin causing gen genetic information to get lost and to deteriorate over time, which is what we would predict anyways in the biblical model. Let me know if you guys have any questions down in the comment section below, and I'll get to them as soon as I can. God bless, guys. You know, this is all still very confusing because either God is the ultimate programmer of our genetics or we are the cause for all of the genetic degradation and all of the genetic diseases that we have today. It literally can't be both. Why would a God create a program that wouldn't be able to recover from this? It seems like if there were ever a perfect program, God would be the one to create it, and he just seems to have failed on this one. All in all, I'm just thoroughly unimpressed with Cupcake's video. He seems to woefully misunderstand evolution, genetics, and natural selection. He either does this on purpose, or he's just ignorant of those subjects. None of this is really all that surprising, though, but it still frustrates the fuck out of me. That's going to be it for our video today. I hope that you enjoyed it. If I missed anything or you think that there's a better argument against the bullshit that he's spinning, please let me know down in the comments. I'd love to hear what you guys think about Matt's positions on these things and any other good responses to the bullshit that he spits. So let me know down below in the comments. And hey, while you're down there, why don't you smash that like button and subscribe if you like this kind of content. Don't forget to stand up and use your voice. Bye, heathens.